Hi, and welcome back to Box Delight. In this series, we're going to be looking at something that I'm pretty excited about. This is a, something that I've not shown much of. It's a game from the coin series from GMT Games, Liberty or Death, The American Insurrection. The game takes place in 1775. British General Thomas Gage is in Boston facing a brewing colonial insurrection. He's garrisoned some troops in Boston, but now he holds orders from the Crown to take decisive action against the insurgents. Across the Atlantic, George III writes, I am of the opinion when once these rebels have felt a smart blow, they will submit, and no situation can ever change my fixed resolution, either to bring the colonies to due obedience to the legislature of the mother country, or to cast them off. A war set to change the course of history has begun. I'm not going to go through the tutorial here. There is a tutorial available inside the box, and there's an excellent video series that's been done by a chap named Joseph Scarzetti. I recommend you go watch that if you wanted to see a walkthrough of the tutorial that comes with the game. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up and I'm going to play through the game using the solitaire rules. Uh, the tutorial is kind of a multiplayer game, so I'm going to show you how to do this solitaire uh, with an ad hoc game. And we'll learn the rules as I demonstrate the game. I hope you enjoy the series. Join me in a second after I've finished setting up and we'll learn about some of those components on the board, what things mean by diving straight into the action. Here we are then, welcome back. Setup is pretty straightforward, we just follow the scenario, placing forces on the map. I'm going to be playing the British, and we're going to have the bots playing the other forces, which are the Patriots, the blue, the Indians, these are these brown colours, and the French, which are white. My forces are the red and green, the British regulars and the British Tories. Our aim as the British is to try and take these locations and win the support of the locals. The aim of our opponents, the French and the Patriots, is to take control from us and to get opposition, to win opposition to the British forces. Right? We'll show you this as the, the game develops. And the Indian nation, they're kind of on our side. They're controlled by an opposing player, in this case a bot. I mean you can play solitaire just taking two against two or one against three and you can choose the format you want to play. I'm choosing the one against three format which means the Indians although they're helping us in reaching our objective they can also steal the victory out from under us and they'll do that if they manage to gain more control here which for them means getting more Indian villages in play than the Patriots, three more in fact. We've got some tracks down here to help us score our victory conditions. So at the moment, we've got a total support of three and a total opposition of four. This is ours, right? We're the British. We've got to get ten more, okay? We've got to get this up higher, ten more spots than the opposition. Now, we're starting off with three support, and they've got four opposition. And at the moment, this is coming from these cities up here. Quebec City, Massachusetts, and New York City and Boston. So if we look at Massachusetts and Boston, you can see that the Patriots and the French, what we call the Rebellion, they have active opposition times two, and it's multiplied by the population. So here in Massachusetts, with a population of two, it's two times two. Boston has a population of one, and they've got passive opposition. You can increase the opposition throughout the game. Okay, so they've got one times one plus two times two, so five opposition. Pull back a bit and you'll see where we get our starting three from. We've got passive support here, the population of one in Quebec City, one times one, and then passive support down here in New York City with a population of two, two times one, so that's two plus one, that's three. That's our starting three. Three versus four, we want ten more than them. There's also a marker here to accumulate casualties. So the cumulative rebellion casualties... So the Patriots and the French starts at three. So the scenario told us, the snow setup told us, they they start at three. The cumul cumulative British casualties start at one. We've got to make sure that we have not just our ten more victory points in, in influence, okay, support, but um, we need to have fewer casualties as well, okay. So we need to keep an eye on those things. We can use the Indians; they'll they'll be helping us by reducing the 
influence of the French and the Patriots, but we don't want them to get too influential. <laughs> I know this is a strange angle. This is a big, big board, okay? So I'm having to place it in this direction. So hopefully you'll follow the game. The French, they begin out of the war, and they've got this track here, uh, token here called French Preparation. It starts at 9, they're going to hit 15 before they can start getting uh, available forces on the board and deployed here, and they're going to cause us some real trouble. Okay, so we've got to prepare for that. As I say, those opposing forces are all going to be controlled by bots, by the AI. We're controlling the British. Now there are some handy sequence of play charts, and we're going to be using these because we're going to have a marker for each of our factions. And they're all going to start eligible to play. Um, and as we take actions, we're going to move along this chart until we become ineligible. Okay, and what that means is that factions who've been active in one turn are inactive in the next turn. Okay, so you kind of take turns a little bit here. You can pass, you can choose not to be active and save your actions for the next turn. Alright, so there's only ever going to be two factions doing stuff per turn. And each turn is driven by this event deck here. Alright, now I don't want to get too bogged down in the rules before I kick off, so we're just going to start by drawing the first card and seeing what happens. This deck is stacked, and I've stacked it with 40 cards, um, and each of those is, is four decks of 10, if you like, and in each of those four stacks of 10, there's shuffled a uh, Winter's Quarter card, and that is like the timer of the game. Okay, and, and each Winter's Quarter is going to mark the end of an era, if you like, and in this scenario, we're playing eras 1776, 77, 78, 79. There's four kind of chapters to the game, if you like. Each time we hit one of those chapters, we're going to check for our victory conditions. Each faction has its own victory condi conditions. So for the Patriot forces and the French forces, it's about having more opposition than the British have support. For the British, it's vice versa. And for the Indians, like I say, it's to do with having more villages on the board than the Patriots have forts. On this card, we look at the top, and we can see that the first nation to act is the French, and the Patriots, the Indians, and us last. Playing Solitaire, we have non-player instruction sheets. Okay, so there's non-player British, non-player Patriots, non-player French. Okay, and you have a little flowchart that you can follow. These flowcharts are obviously heavily abbreviated, but they're just yes-no events, okay? Just yes-no decisions, if you like. So the first thing here says, Sequence of play prevents event play, or French simple has this sword icon. There is no sword underneath this flag, and there's nothing preventing the French taking their action in the sequence of play. They are eligible. They have a token here. They can take an action. And the next part of the flowchart says that they will use this shaded part. Okay, so these parts at the top tend to benefit the British and the Indians and below the French and the Patriots. So they'll do the shaded part, but it says if support is greater than opposition, it isn't actually, opposition is highest right now. Opposition is four, support is three, remember? Uh, but it's any of, of these being true, okay? If the event moves French regulars or squadrons from unavailable, it doesn't. Event places available French pieces on the map, it doesn't. Event inflicts British casualties, it doesn't. Event adds French resources, it doesn't. If the Treaty of Alliance has been played, it hasn't. Okay, so then the intelligence here says, no, we're not going to use the event. Now, it wouldn't have been a bad thing if it did, because the event says, give the Patriot resources plus three, so the French are offering the Patriots their support. Um, in terms of resources. But with opposition greater than support right now, they're going to instead push on. Okay, so there's no event. French resource greater than zero? Yes, it is. The resources for the French are currently at five. That's something we're doing set up. Push on. Treaty of Alliance played. This is the Treaty of Alliance card. Okay, we've not reached that point yet. So Treaty of Alliance played is no, and it says... Are the Patriot resources less than 1d3? Let's roll. We've rolled a 1. A 1 doesn't help them. Patriot resources less than 
less than one? Uh, the answer is no. So here we go, we've got the French agent mobilisation. Place, two militia, or if not possible, one continental in Quebec City, New York, New Hampshire, or Massachusetts. First, to add most rebel control, then wear most patriot units. Now if we look at our, pl our player aids, you can see that each faction has its own list of commands and special activities, and also the victory check is down here. So as a player aid, there's a number that come with the game, so each player can have one. Um, and if we look at the French, you can see that one of their commands is the French Asian mobilisation. So that's what the, our, our flowchart is asking us to do. The purpose is to add Patriot Militia or Continentals. Okay, and it clarifies one space only, Quebec, New York, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. Um, if not at active support, it costs one resource and then there's your procedure. Okay, so this tells you how to go and do it. Here's our available... Patriot forces, these are our continentals, these are our militia. So we do have available militia forces, so we're going to take two. And let's first consider, what was it, Quebec City. So if I were to put two here, it's currently under British control, then there would be two British pieces, two Patriot pieces. It's combined forces that count, so whether it's uh, French and Patriot or British and Indian. Indian forces can't control a location alone, they need to be supported by the British. Okay. If I put those two there, or if the French player put those two there, then there would no, be no control. No faction has majority. Okay, so this would go to uncontrolled. Alright. The numbers of pieces, all these units, forts, villages, okay, militia. All those things count as pieces, all of our wooden pieces. All right. So we're not going to choose there. Next was New York. There's five British, two Indian, three Patriot. Generals don't count. Um, so that wouldn't be enough to take control. Next was New Hampshire. Ah, now here we're good. Two militia here would be enough for the rebellion to take control. So that's their that's their move. Now they have to pay with resources. It's gonna cost one resource. Notice they would have considered Massachusetts next if that didn't work, uh, but they already have control of Massachusetts. And most control also takes into account population. Okay, this is population one. So if this wasn't in Patriot control, they would have gone for Massachusetts instead because that would give them more control. It's scaled up by the population, alright, so that's kind of like two control versus one control. And then going back to our flow chart, we can see after completing the French agent mobilisation, it says, then préparer la guerre. This is before the Treaty of Alliance, okay, so it says move one blockade from unavailable to the West Indies. Okay, well we do have that. If not, move three French regulars from available to available. If none, then no special activity. OK. So once more, all we're doing is driving one of these French commands. OK, so it's going to take a command and a special activity, préparer le guerre. So if we look then on the sequence of play, we can see that eligible factions have three options. They can do command only, no special activity, a command and a special activity, or an event. OK, the French chose not to do that. They did do a command, so it's going to be command only or no special activity, or command and special. They chose this one, okay? So we're going to move their faction token up here. The first faction chose to take both. And as described by the event, we're taking one of these tokens, French blockade or French squadron, and placing it in the West Indies in one of these available spots here. Okay, so what the French are doing is trying to make their forces available. But not only that, that also pushes up the French prep. French prep is equal to the number of available forces, 246, commanders don't count, plus these two, that was 8, plus the current level of um, combined British casualties, which was 1, okay? 246, 7, 8, 9, well now we've increased it by 1, 10. So this token is going up one spot. Remember, more than 15 French army 
and play the Treaty of Alliance. Next then we move to the next eligible player, which, as we saw from our rent card, was the Patriots. Okay, and we're going to follow their flow chart. Okay, so they're sitting here in the eligible factions. Will they take an action? Remember, we're still on the same event card. All right, we haven't gone to the next one yet. We're still pushing through this sequence. The other thing to, to note is that the next card that's coming up should be face up. So you can see what's coming up. It doesn't matter here because the non-players are, are doing their thing. But if we get to act, then it might be significant whether we decide to pass and wait for the next one or what we want to do, okay, or change our strategy depending on what's coming up. So you've always got this little look ahead of what card's coming next. So um, the Patriots go next, and it starts the same way as the as the French, you see. The sequence of play prevents event play, or Patriots symbol has the sword. The sequence of play doesn't prevent event play. It says th this is the this is where we have to follow now. Okay, they can't go they can't play their action here, 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 or here. They have to follow the arrow. So if the first player went here, the second player has to go here or pass. Okay, it says event or limited command. So we can play an event. So we're not limited. So we follow the flow chart to the no. Okay, we're not prevented from playing events. No. It says support greater in opposition. No, it's not. Event places underground militia, or at least one opposition or village. No. Event places a patriot fort or removes a village. No. Event adds plus three patriot resources. Yes, it does. Okay, so they're going to take the event. Notice when the French did this consideration, they'd only ever play the shaded part, but the Patriot is capable of playing the non-shaded part if it, if it would benefit them, uh, which it doesn't, of course. Uh, it doesn't satisfy any of the conditions. So Patriot resources plus three. One, two, three, we're all up here. That's it now. Two factions have acted in turn one, so they're going to move to the ineligible factions spot for next time. Only the British and the Indian factions are going to be able to work on the next card, which is the origin of all our misfortune. So that becomes the active card. We flip this one over to see what's coming next. And the Patriots would be the first to act, followed by the French. Both have acted, so it's going to start the next turn with the Indian faction and then the British. So join me next time as we head into game turn two.